Hey, Buddy Lindsay here from GoDjango.com. Welcome back. And today I want to talk to you about unit tests. Should you do test-driven development? Should you write unit tests? Or should you even have them at all? Now I kind of leave the I kind of say that as three distinct things because I kind of see, you know, doing just strictly unit TDD is you write your tests and then you write the code that works with those tests. Also, I look at writing unit tests. Uh, in the sense that I'm writing my code and then I write the tests to wrap around that code that I wrote and then I have you know the no tests at all category now each three have different pros and cons and I would argue the last one of no tests has so many cons it's not even worth almost discussing almost and we'll get that to that here in a little while first I want to talk about you know TDD versus just unit tests so TDD, what is it? Again, it's, you know, you write your test and because you know exactly what you want your code to look like and work like, work like, and then you write your code to make those tests pass. I love TDD. I love being able to do that, except I don't ever get to hardly do it. Like I literally have tweets in my Twitter feed that says, yay, I get to do TDD. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm just not a good enough developer to do test-driven development or if it's a remnant of waterfall design or I really don't know because TDD requires you to know what you want your code to do before. Most of the time when I'm doing development, I get a general idea of what I want something to happen as, as an overall from a user interface perspective. And then I have to go in there and do a lot of experimenting to try to figure out how to make that thing happen. And usually once I get done experimenting, uh, then I am like, okay, it works, and I'm going to write unit tests for it. I mean, maybe that's, you know, the whole spike and then rewrite kind of thing where you spike it out, you know how you want it to work, and now you have, kind of have that, and now you go write all your tests and you rewrite the code to be able to fit those tests so you have a better testable API. I'm not exactly sure how that works. So I generally fall into the unit tests category, except for the times that I actually get the chance to do TDD. And I can usually tell when those are, because most of the time, like I said, I'm trying to make something work and then it's like, yay, and then I write my tests. And then I'll go back in and refactor some of my code to make it work better, be more efficient or whatever I need it to happen. And just generally find better ways of doing it kind of simultaneously. Uh, as, as I'm fixing tests and rewriting code. And, and I feel like that leads to a good product that I get in the end. And I, I kind of go with a highly unit tested set of code so that I know what everything that happens in my code and if something changes, it, a test will break. I get really nervous if I change code and no tests break, uh, and which is a completely different discussion that I'll do a video on for sure. So now you have this other thing that is no tests at all, or a little test, little to few tests. And I think that's a bad way to go in a lot of ways because I've been in so many situations that I've changed a little piece of code over here and it affects entire other parts of the system that I didn't expect it to, to, to affect. And, and, and it can lead to uh, some odd results. One of those being is I was in a model that I thought only one part of the project used um, and I changed a calculation. Well, over here in a totally different area that I didn't realize used this model, uh, it changed all of the numbers in a pretty catastrophic way and it totally blew my mind. And so in order to change that calculation, I had to go change a whole bunch of other code and do some refactorings because we had a lot of really tight coupling in this case uh, for that code. And so it just, it adds a safety net. Now there might be reasons to not write unit tests. And that's if you have a chunk of code that is almost untestable or is untestable because it's, it's doing some pretty complex things. Um, and you need high performance out of it. Uh, and, and they only got this example because of a Stack Overflow um, or a thing about Stack Overflow and how uh, they have some pretty complex code that is super high performance. And so they don't have tests wrapped around it because they couldn't find an efficient and good way to test it. Um, I've never run into a situation like that. 
but I do know it's out there and a possibility for if I ever run into that situation. So where does that leave us on the TDD versus unit test versus no test? Well, it leads us probably where we started at the beginning. I highly recommend you writing unit tests. I recommend that you going through the effort of learning. It's kind of a pain in the rear to get started with. It's, it's frustrating and annoying and, and can really like take a lot of time, you know, up front to figure out how to do unit tests. And I know I've worked on, you know, chunks of code that has taken me a week to write all this code and get it working. And it's like, well, crap, now I have to go write tests and I spend the next two days writing tests, you know, but you know what? I factually found problems in my code whenever I go write unit tests and, you know, some obscure little thing that I, I didn't account that I didn't account for that I needed to account for that those unit tests allowed me the opportunity to account for. And now I know it works. And so I, I highly recommend tests and I highly recommend you take the time to write them. You don't need to write, you know, a thousand tests for one little function to accommodate, you know, all the random little characters that might pop up in a string. In fact, if you decouple your code properly, rarely are you going to have an opportunity where random characters are actually going to end up going into a, a function as a parameter or something like that. You, you'll have nice modular functions and methods that are easily testable and you know exactly what's going to go in and out of those and and you'll have a lot more confidence in your code so again i recommend tests i recommend taking the time and effort to learn and practice doing tests so with that in mind what are your opinions of tdd versus not doing tdd and having unit tests versus no tests i i'd love to hear some opinions out there so please leave a comment below and let me know what you think uh, feel free to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. I want to thank you all for watching and have a great day.